with all of this said, if, if these arguments are plausible, why do you think it is that they're increasingly unpopular? Levels of religious activity are going down in the West. Uh, levels of religious belief are going down in the West. Is it just that people have never dealt with these arguments or they decide that they're not interested in hearing the arguments because it's more fun to, to be atheist than not to be atheist? Why, yeah. why is atheism gaining? Does it feel? It's a little bit of both. I would say, speaking from the perspective of an academic philosopher, a major part of the problem is the hyper-specialization of modern academic life. We just know so much about so many different things that you could spend your whole life, for example, just doing molecular biology and never read anything in any other discipline, and you still will not have plumbed the depths of that little, that one field. It's not a little field, but that one field, molecular biology, right? That's true even in philosophy itself and in different academic disciplines. They've all got their sub-disciplines, and you could spend your whole life just studying the sub-disciplines. Now, what follows from that is that you have fewer and fewer generalists in modern academic life. In other words, people who try to look at the big picture. If you're talking about an Aristotle, or to go back you know, far fewer centuries, a Descartes, or even to go back 100 years, 150 years, the average philosopher or scientist in those days, for most of the history of Western thought up until about a century or so ago, could literally be a know-it-all. You could still master all the different bodies of knowledge, and you could know a lot about philosophy and a lot about physics and a lot about biology and all the rest. Much harder to do that now. So part of the problem is that you get uh, people outside of philosophy, but also even people within philosophy who simply don't know a whole lot about the kind of arguments that I talk about in the book. They may know nothing more than whatever cliches were trotted out in their introduction to philosophy class when they were a freshman or a soft, uh, sophomore, and they heard some of the canned objections that were aimed at caricatures of Aquinas or Aristotle and Leibniz, and then they, ne they never look back. They, and then they repeat it to their own students when they teach an introduction to philosophy class, say. So part of the problem is just that. It's lack of knowledge on the part of your average intellectual or your average academic because modern intellectual life has become so specialized and fragmented. It's hard to know enough about the issue. Unfortunately, ego prevents people from uh, refraining from talking about things they don't know about. So you'll have someone like a Richard Dawkins, for example, who's undeniably a brilliant man, a very good writer and so forth. He knows a lot about biology. Unfortunately, he knows very little about philosophy and even less about theology. But for some reason, that doesn't keep him from pontificating on those subjects, right? So he trots out the stock objections that he might have heard when he was an undergraduate, uh, and he doesn't bother to, to sort of do the research and so forth. And so what happens is when someone with that degree of prominence repeats these same tiresome and tired objections, then that gives them new life. Because people think, well, Richard Dawkins, he's a smart guy. He's an Oxford professor. He must know what he's talking about. No, not necessarily. But that gives a whole other generation of, of young people, students and so forth, the same erroneous ideas about the arguments. And so they get perpetuated that way. That's another part of the, part of the reason.